Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorials on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. Well, as you may have realized, this is not just for microscopists, but for anyone interested in image analysis or data analysis. Okay, in the last tutorial, we looked at how we can take a convolutional neural network and then take the neural part of it out and only take the convolutional part and add random forest to make it a classifier. So this is a continuation of the last tutorial where we are looking at a slightly different application, which is semantic segmentation, where we want to classify individual pixel. It's still a classification problem, okay? Except in this case, we're classifying every pixel rather than classifying the image as a barn or you know a dog park or something else, okay? So I'm gonna use a scientific example for this. So again, what is semantic segmentation where every pixel is labeled as something? So for that, I'm going to use a data set that, let me minimize this, a data set that uh, looks like this. So I have train images. So I have images in the TIFF file format. Again, this is a 3D TIFF stack but let's just do one 2D at a time, okay? So here I have many different regions. Again, this is uh, the same example I've used as part of my video uh, 67 and 67B, okay? Please go ahead and watch that. There, we took the labeled images and then we extracted features uh, using Gabor and a whole bunch of other filters and used random forest. We are gonna do exactly the same, except in this case, we are going to use uh, our convolutional layers to generate the features. Now, many of you asked me how to generate labels, how to get the labels you know, for these images so you can get started. So this video, I didn't cover that as part of 67. So here, let's actually look at, first of all, how to uh, create labels, which is ground truth, okay? So uh, the output, actually, before showing you the output, let me go to a page called appear.com, A-P-E-E-R.com, okay? Again, this is what a disclaimer, what we do at work. We are creating a platform for research community primarily, and this is all free, okay? So you can sign up and you can use it. Uh, think of this as your uh, uh, image analysis platform in the cloud. In fact, if you don't know how to do machine learning and all that kind of stuff, we have a bunch of modules. Something new is also coming up, so please stay tuned. But once you sign up, what you see is something like this, and I'm going to upload my file, and everyone gets up to 100 gigabytes of free storage, so go ahead and upload your files and annotate them and also run them through machine learning workflow. In a few weeks, we'll have them. But uh, more importantly, in this case, let's say I uploaded an image and you click on this button that says annotate uh, images. It opens up in a uh, view like this. And as you can see here, all I've done is created four classes, background, clay, quartz, and pyrite. And then I use these tools up here. So when I click on this, they get highlighted, square or something, uh, brush tool, paint the pixels, that's it. So for a background, it's in purple, clay will be in green and so on, okay? And you can, you can load a bunch of images and you can, you can uh, label any number of them as you want. But once it's done, I exported them as an image, as binary mask, and I selected all the regions I would like to export. So I have these four classes, okay? In fact, I'll have five classes. One background, clay, quartz, pyrite, but what about all the regions that haven't been labeled, right? All of these regions, they'll be given a pixel value of zero. So in my output image, I'll have pixel values of zero, one, two, three, four. Zero for all the unlabeled pixels, which we should not care about. In fact, we should dump all of them. If I had enough patience and time, I would have labeled more pixels, but this is not enough, we'll see that. But this is okay, it proves the point. In any way, so once I download it, Let's go ahead and open up image J so it's easy for you to see. It saves it into the labels are saved as something called ome.tiff, but they are just like TIFF. You, should, you don't need to worry about it. Just go ahead and open them. As you can see, here is how the label looks like, yeah, for this image that we just labeled right there. So it's, as you can see, it's everything that we have labeled here. Look at this big block and look at these bright regions the, in yellow. So that's exactly what we have here, the big blob and yellow regions. Now, if you look at this up here, it says the pixel values. You see, most of it is black, which means it's zero. And then we have three, we have two, we have one, 
and four. In fact, if I open up the histogram, you can see that I have a value of zero, 945,000 pixels, 40,000 pixels, a value of one, value of two, value of three, and value of four. I should have done a better job at balancing some of these data sets, but that's a different discussion. For now, we have labeled images. And in fact, I have, uh, let me close everything. So I have eight labeled images corresponding to the eight train images. I hope we are all there now. Okay, so we have enough information. Again, not much labeled data, very little, but that should be enough to prove the point right now. Okay, so what are we going to do? Semantic segmentation. How? Well, first, let's go ahead and I don't know why I have those three dots up there. Let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, so run the standard libraries. Okay, import the libraries. And this part of the code is very similar to the code I've used in the last tutorial, except in the previous tutorial, we had our labels as folder names. Sunset, dog park, or barn. When you're labeling an image, it's very easy. You have a folder with specific name and all the images corresponding are in the folder and your folder name can be your label. But in this case, I have labels as full images. Well, part of it is label, but uh, my masks or labels are all these images. So it's not just a text. So the training is going to be a bit longer, okay, to begin with, but how do we do this? First of all, I'd like to work with 512 size images because I'm not going to do deep learning. I'm not gonna talk about units and that's a different tutorial. Please go ahead and watch it. It's on my channel anyhow. Uh, let's go ahead and work with size 512 uh, and uh, let's run this images directory. So we have test images, train images, and train masks. So let's start with size 512. Well, that's what we defined. And let's start with an empty list called train images. And this is the list we are going to populate by reading each image at a time, the image that has an extension TIF, and converting them into size 512 by 512, and then uh, adding them or appending them to this train images. This is exactly what we have done in the last tutorial, okay? So let's go ahead and run that. Now you should see up here, we have, where is my train uh, images? So we have eight of these images, train images, and then each of this is a NumPy array, right? So far, so good. We are going to do exactly the same with train masks, nothing different, exactly the same with train masks, okay? We should have eight of those. Now what? Now, uh, same thing, we are going to convert our train images and train masks into NumPy array. I'm not sure if I did that, so let's go ahead and run that. Now my train images is a NumPy array. Now you can see my train images. It has dimensions of eight images, 512 by 512 by three. So these are considered as RGB images. You can just convert them to gray if you want, uh, but you need to change your uh, deep learning model. Okay, so train masks, I'm also converting them into NumPy array because NumPy arrays are easier to work with than lists. Okay, so now I'm going to assign my X train as nothing but our train images. Again, I did very similar in the last tutorial. Y train is our train masks. So we have our X train and Y train. Now I'm going to expand the dimensions on Y train. If you see my Y train is eight, 512 and 512. My Y train uh, is a grayscale images, but I'm going to expand the dimensions so they match my train images, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So my Y train is, this is all data handling. There's nothing tricky here. Now comes defining the deep learning model. You can actually do a complicated model like the last time, but in this example, I'm just showing that, okay, um, I'm using sequential method from Keras to add these layers, but I'm going to add convolutional 2D with 32 filters, convolutional 2D with 32 filters, and that's it. If you want, you can uh, uncomment this. I'll share the code with you. You can uncomment this and you can do uh, uh, any of this. Uh, but let's just do these two layers for now, okay? So let's run these lines. Again, I just defined, instead of model, we are calling it feature extractor. Very similar to the last tutorial. Please go ahead and watch the la last tutorial if you haven't done that, the previous one to this one in my playlist. Okay, so now we have a um, model and uh, now I'm actually defining my X as applying this feature extractor, okay, applying these two, this model, and predicting it on my X train. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 
So I should get an output. This output is nothing but filtered images. So my X is again 8 by 512 by 512 by 32. Why is it 32? Because that's how many uh, filters that are applied in this last convolutional layer. So I see 32. Again, if you apply a Gabor filter with, you know, we did this in uh, video 67, where we had like about 30 different Gabor responses and we uh, added them as different columns to our uh, Pandas data frame. So very similarly here, we have 32 of these. Uh, now, if you want 64, you can do that. Let's, for the fun of it, let's do this one more time. 64, and now if you apply that onto X train, you should see 64 up here in a second once this is done. There you go. My X is 8 by 512 by 512 by 64. So you can define your architecture any way you want. And let's go back to 32 because it's faster computation for my demonstration purposes. Semantic segmentation will be much slower than the classification because you have a lot more pixels that we are trying to uh, segment here or classify. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. We should have uh, our X as 8 by 512 by 512 by 32. And now I'm reshaping it, okay? So right there. So we have uh, we have uh, 32 columns and each column with a, uh, how many rows? 2,097,152 rows. That's how many data points that we actually have. That's how many data points that we actually have. Don't worry, we're not going to use every pixel. Remember, bulk of that is basically it's worth looking at it. Bulk of that is dark pixels. We do not want to include pixels with value of zero as part of our training because they do not represent our images. Okay, we'll do that in a second. So for that, what I'm trying to do is, uh, do we have our Y? Do we have our Y? No. So we have to run these lines. So we already did the reshape. Let's go ahead and do y is y train dot reshape. And there you go. So we have the same number of rows, except here we have pixel value 0, 0, 0. Occasionally we'll see something once and so on. Okay. This is not good because we need to drop zero. Okay. How do we do that? An easy way is I like to work with pandas data frame. I mean, we need to drop all the values with zero, but we also need to uh, drop the corresponding X values. Okay, that's why I'm combining them. So I create a pandas data frame with my X, and then I also add my label as a column right there. So if I open my data set right here, that's a lot of data points, but oh, I shouldn't have done that. But if I open it, you'll see that, okay, uh, the last column is going to be, there you go. The last column is going to be the label and bunch of them are zeros, but you'll see some ones and twos occasionally, okay? So, so far so good. Now, uh, first of all, let's actually look at the values of label column. So the unique values are zero, one, two, three, four. We know that, but it's worth checking. You wanna make sure the data didn't change, you know, uh, uh, in the middle. Now let's go ahead and see how many of these we have. So for zero, we have a bulk of the data, uh, you know, bulk of our data set has value zero and some of them three, one, two, and four, okay? So that's exactly why let's go ahead and drop all the values with label zero. So now we have a data set that's useful. Now if I open this, now I have 79,000, no, no more 2 million anymore, yeah? 79,000 data sets right there. Now everything should be either a label 1, 2, 3, 4, or uh, that's it, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's no zero. So far so good, please stay with me here. Now I'm separating this into X and Y, okay? And this is very similar to how we have done in the past. Uh, the entire data set, except for the column label, is my X. Let's run it and y is exactly opposite the entire data set except for uh, i mean uh, the the data set with the column name label now let's go ahead and instantiate our random forest classifier this is exactly same as the random forest classifier we did in the last tutorial where uh, except our x and y values are different that's the only thing here now let's go ahead and fit this and this may take a while because we have a lot of data points Okay, so we're done. That was about 30 to 40 seconds, I should say. And if you want, you can go ahead and save this as pickle dump uh, and then reload it. Let's go ahead and do that so you guys know what I mean. So this is like model.save, you know, so we are actually saving it into a file name called uh, rfmodel.sav. Uh, you can give any name here. This is nothing but a pickle file. These can get pretty large, okay? 
and then we can load this file in future if you want but for now let's uh, I mean obviously we'll load it right away but you see how long it took about uh, 30 seconds or longer so let's go ahead and load it again so you know what the process is so now it's loaded under the name loaded underscore model okay so now let's apply this let's test this model onto an external image so let's uh, open a test image meaning we haven't used it for training test image 360 is the one that I uh, selected which is this one okay this is the image let's go ahead and open this is how it looks like let me minimize it and yeah 360 and I'm doing exactly the same I'm resizing it to 512 and uh, doing pretty much the same operations I've done before right there and after this we need to do exactly the same like extract the features just like before just like we have done right here dot predict wherever we did it up there um, and uh, where, are, where are we right there so let's go ahead and run it and then we need to reshape it same operations as our training images okay now we are all uh, ready to uh, now we are all ready to uh, predict this on to you know using our loaded model okay so let's go ahead and do that now if you look at our prediction uh, if I can um, open it let's find it there you go this is uh, again uh, an image that's 512 by 512 right so we need to reshape it into 512 by 512 this array so that's exactly what I'm trying to do here and finally once you reshape it let's go ahead and Im show there you go that's not excellent that's not great but that's not bad either look at that so this is the original image and that's the segmented image in fact I could have set a threshold here uh, for the prediction and we have we could have actually gotten much better result out here but this is this is still not uh, not pretty bad uh, in fact let's go ahead and uh, do cmap equals to gray so it looks a bit more realistic okay there you go and where is our original image apparently I closed it so let's go ahead and open it there you go so th this is our original image this is the prediction that's not bad including this darkish area right there in the middle you see how it's actually predicting it as something different so this actually even with limited training data just imagine how amazing the results would look like in, if I labeled a few more regions or if I actually imported a lot more uh, 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 did I import a lot more labels I think we did yeah if, if we labeled a few more and then uh, added uh, what I I'm very bad at articulating right now but if I open one of the last images you will see that I don't have many labels so I was patient for the first three images maybe uh, not even that much and then got a bit lazy so even with this much this little training data we got very decent results uh, much better than what you would get on unit go ahead and try these inputs on your unit first of all you need to divide these images into patches so your unit can handle it like 32 by 32 or maybe 64 by 64 and it can be a bit challenging so if you have limited data like this go ahead and do not forget to go to appear.com sign up it's free completely go ahead and uh, label your images and you know the workflow here so I hope you found this tutorial to be educating, edu educating, that's not a word, uh, educative and uh, uh, entertaining, hopefully, and uh, informative. So please go ahead and subscribe to this channel because you will, you do not want to miss uh, uh, future videos that are like this, okay? Anyway, thanks for your attention and I should end this long video. I'm pretty sure you're tired. Thanks.